This is part nine in the Craftsman Emerson Gen 4 Commercial Drill Press Rebuild Series. If you haven't seen part eight, click the link at the top of the screen. In this video, we're going to be continuing with the assembly. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. We got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to work on is we're going to assemble the Jacobs Chuck. And I have a video uh, all about the Jacobs Chucks, how to disassemble them, assemble them, how to know which jaw goes in which slot, all of that. And I'll link that video here. But I'm basically going to grease up this chuck with Mystic. It's a high temp grease. And this is an NLGI number two grease. And after I greased up all the bores inside the chuck body, I'm going to grease up the jaws. These jaws were in really good shape, so there was no need to hone them or replace them or anything like that. So in that video that I linked and told you about, these jaws have to go in a very certain order, and they actually have a specific bore that they're supposed to go in. Each one of these bores, the three holes, are numbered on the chuck body itself. And that video explains all of that, but basically we're going to insert the jaws in the proper order in the proper bores. So after we've got that third one in, I like to press them all the way in. And then we have the split nut. And we will put some grease on it as well. And this nut can only go on one way, so uh, it's all fairly, fairly a simple procedure, but... Uh, if you don't have the jaws in the correct order, then it's not going to operate properly. So then we can apply the split nut. And what we will do is hold the body of the chuck and then rotate that split nut. And what should happen is those jaws will start to protrude out of the chuck. Like that. And they should all come together perfectly aligned when they are at their fully extended point. Like so. And then we should be able to retract them back into the chuck. And I think I've got a piece of cotton stuck on there. Nope, part of my latex glove. Huh. So we'll take those gloves off and just get messy. So if you've got the jaws aligned properly then you should be able to rotate this and open back up the chuck. So it looks like we're good to go. So we're going to leave the jaws protruding about a half an inch. And then we'll take the sleeve and we're going to grease the inside of it. And then we'll place the sleeve over the chuck and that'll capture the split nut so it won't fall off. Then we're going to take this over to the vise. Ensuring that we have the jaws protruding about a half an inch. And we're just going to use a piece of pipe that's about the same size as the sleeve. 
and we will compress this whole assembly in the vise. And it will move that sleeve over that back lip. And there you go. That's an assembled Jacob's Chuck. Now just make sure that the Chuck works properly. So we'll just rotate that sleeve, make sure that the Chuck is all the way closed and then it will open all the way up. And we are good to go. So next we're going to install the chuck on the coil spindle assembly. And to do that, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to insert a large Allen wrench inside the chuck. Make sure the flats of the Allen wrench align with the jaws of the chuck. And then tighten it down with the chuck key. Then place that Allen wrench inside the vise. Next, we'll uh, take the feed stop bracket and attach it to the quill. And it should just slide on there. Make sure it's fully seated. And once it's on there, then we can go ahead and insert the taper of the spindle into the socket on the chuck. And then hand tighten the safety lock collar to the thrust collar on the spindle. Then we take a wrench, spanner wrench, and tighten it down. And this seats the chuck to the spindle. And then we can just use the chuck key to loosen the chuck and slip it off the Allen wrench. Next, we're going to assemble the head. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to lube up all of the bores in that head. And there are a lot of them. The only bores that will not get lube are the two spindle pulley bearing bores. But every other bore is going to get lubed. And next, I'm using number four quarter inch drive screws. You can get these from McMaster Car. I think that box costs like 10 bucks, has like a hundred of them in there. And we're going to start attaching the different panels to the head casting. So you can just get one started with a little brass hammer. And we're not driving them all the way in. We're just going to work our way around until we have all four of them in. Both of the side panels have four each. You might have to use a uh, pen uh, punch to align those holes a little better. But there's some play in this panel until you fully seat those drive screws. So we're just starting them here. And once we've got them seated, or once we've got them all started, then we can seat them. And we're going to use a brass punch for that. And again, we'll just work our way around until all four of them are fully seated. Next, we're going to install the scale. And this has two screws 
And the holes that these screws go in in the scale itself are elongated. And that's so you can loosen them up and adjust this scale up and down so that your depth gauge pointer is accurate and correct. But for now, we're just going to tighten down these screws and we can make that adjustment later on once we've got the head is fully assembled. All right, next we'll install the model number panel on the back of the head, and that uses two drive screws. And all these drive screws are the exact same size. So again, we'll just get the two drive screws started, and then we'll seat them. All right, last we have the other side panel. And same as the first side panel, we start all four of the drive screws and then we'll come back and seat them. Too easy. So there are three screws that are used to compress or expand the gap in the head. And they go in a very specific order. So just refer to the owner's manual. And if you don't have an owner's manual, there's a link for one in the description of this video. But we're just going to start these for right now. We're not going to completely lock those down. And next we're going to install the power panel. So we're going to run the power cable through that hole in the back of the head and drop the panel in there. And then we need to take those four wires that go to the switch plate or the switch panel and fish them through the head. And if you recall, there's a uh, roll pin in there that we need to go between the roll pin and the side of the head casting. And that ensures that none of these wires get in the way of the spindle pulley assembly or the bearings that sit in there. So as we fish them around that roll pin, we're forcing them out the front of the head casting. And we can move that panel further towards the front. And you can kind of see that roll pin inside the head there. I'll put a marker on it. And there you go. But that's what we're going around. And fishing those wires out the front of the head casting. I think I've got one that's being kind of stubborn. But once we've got them all fished out the front, then we can line up the power panel with its mounting holes. And then go ahead and mount it. So it uses two of these small, I think there's six 32 screws. 
and they have lock washers on them. Kind of hard to do with gloves on. And then there's a bracket cover that's going to cover up most of that wiring. It mounts on top of this power panel. like that and then it uses two I think they're 832s or 1032 screws with lock washers as well I think I'm missing a lock washer for that last screw. Not the end of the world. Probably could have time lapse a little bit of this. Sorry about that. And here we are. That's the, uh, the switch panel that we stripped and clear coated and applied vinyl lettering to. And here are the switches. So they mount in through the back side of the switch plate and they have two screws that are recessed that lock them in place. And so this is after I've already done the other three screws. This is the last screw. And then we can put the panel on there. Just make sure those are in there good. We can put the panel on there. And then the screws that go through the panel, they go through the bracket and into the head. So there's four of them. So, as you can see, I've still got all of those wires marked as to where they go. So, I'm going to go ahead and connect them. I'm just going to leave those pieces of tape on them. It's not going to hurt anything. They don't protrude into that cavity that I was just reaching down in. So, we're fine. So, we can just... Go ahead and tighten down all four of these screws that mount the switch plate and panel to the head. And after we've got all four of those screws in, then we can tighten them down. Last thing we're going to do is uh, insert that lockout, safety lockout on the motor side switch. 
Then we can insert the light bulb into the bottom. I like using an LED bulb and I use like the brightest LEDs I can get. So these are like daylight bright. And then we'll plug this thing in and test the switch panel. So the light works. And in the motor side, I've got a heat gun plugged into it right now. So I'll hear that heat gun turn on. Make sure we're not getting any anything electrical coming through the head casting itself. So we're good to go there. So next we can go ahead and install the spindle pulley assembly. And we're just going to use a mallet to tap this in. Get the first bearing past the first bore. There's two bores in here. And the bearings ride inside those bores. So we're just constantly checking it to make sure that it's running perpendicular. And then once we've got it past the first bore, we line it up for the second bore. And I find it easier to rotate the head. So I'm going to turn this around and I can see more of it from this side. We're just going to make sure it's lined up and then we'll seat it. Once it's completely seated, right there, we should be about a quarter of an inch off of the head casting. That light bulb protrudes through the bottom a little bit, so we can't set it down. It'll break that bulb. And then we've got a machine screw that goes in only one of them, and it goes in on this side. And that's what holds the spindle pulley assembly inside the head. So it actually goes all the way into the cavity where the, where the bottom bearing is, and it and it rides on the top of the race, the outer race for that bearing. So next we can go ahead and install the head on the column. So if our math was correct, when we place that column collar on there, then the head should be almost completely level with the top edge of the column as far as the top bore for that. So. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to lube up and install the head lock. So just like that table lock, you've got the lock, which is the threaded nut, if you will, that has two flats on it. And then you have the sleeve, which is what I just put on the screw, that only has one flat on it. And just like the table lock, these flats need to engage the column. So we take the handle or screw and the sleeve and insert it on this side. And then we can put the nut or lock on the other side. And just make sure those flats are facing towards the column. And then we can turn the screw or the handle and it'll catch those threads and then we can lock the head down. All right, so the next thing we're going to install is the eccentric bearing. So if you recall, this is in uh, off center hole bore in the center of it, if that made any sense. And what this does is it allows the pinion to ride closer or further from the quill. So we're just going to lube it up with the super lube and then we're going to insert it inside the head casting. Make sure it's all the way in there.
Boy, that went in way easier than it came out. And we're just going to start the lock screw. We're not going to tighten this uh, set screw down. We're just going to start it. Next, we're going to install the feed return spring. So there's a roll pin on the inside that captures one end of it. And then we can install the hub pinion spring assembly. We're just going to push it on top of the spring. And I'll put a link here for how to install the springs and adjust the tension. I've got a separate video on that, but here we're grabbing this end of the spring with a, uh, a small pick and pulling out on it. And then we're going to install the roll pin through the spring and through the pinion like so. And now that spring is properly installed and all we need to do is tension it. We'll put that plastic cap back on the end of the pinion there and we're good to hook. So next we've got the quill gasket. We're going to slide down on the quill. Again, the measurements for all these things are in that spreadsheet that's in the description of the video. And then we're going to lube up the quill and spindle. So we're just putting lube on the splines on the spindle. That will engage with the spindle pulley assembly. And then we'll lube up the quill itself. Specifically that rack right there where all the teeth are. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen up all three of those screws that compress or expand the head casting. And then we're going to tighten down the center one because that expands the head casting. So we're loosening the top one and the bottom one. And now we're going to tighten the center one down. We're not going to go too tight. We want to, right there is where it starts to get hard. So we're just going to go about a half a turn. And then we can install the quill. So we just start it up through the bore. Make sure the, the gear rack or the teeth are facing towards the column. And we pull out on the hub and push up on the quill. And you can see how it just pushed up on that spindle pulley assembly. We just use our hand and rotate that a little bit so that the splines on the spindle align with the spindle pulley assembly. And now we're installed. So the quill will stay in place because the, the teeth on the pinion are holding it in the head. So now we can install the feed stop rod. And we have not tightened down that feed stop bracket yet. So we're just going to make sure that the rod can ride in between those two protrusions on the head casting. And it's not rubbing on any either one of them. And if all of that is good to go, then we can tighten down the feed stop bracket. So again... Just going to put a little bit of lube on that screw and then we'll stick it in there and tighten it down. All 
And then we can install the uh, depth gauge pointer. This is a three-part assembly. Has a little shoe on the inside of it, and then it's got the thumb screw on the outside. And then the last thing is the feed stop collar that goes above that. Whenever we get to it, there we go. And that's going to wrap up this video. So we have one more video. Video 10 will be the final parts of the assembly. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe. As always, I appreciate the support. And I will see you next time.